All right, guys, the crunch time begins now. So what we got to do is that we have to get all of this fuel pump, turbo kit, the whole system installed on the truck. Now, if you guys are wondering what the heck this is, I made a video explaining the turbo kit and a video explaining the fuel pump. Those will be linked down below. I am going to just get right into this and I'm going to start pulling all of this off. This all has to come out. Not that it's that much because I already have the factory stuff off. It's all under the bench there. Um, so I'm probably going to pull the exhaust because we have to do, we have to pull the downpipe off to be able to have access to the rear of the turbo to get the up pipes off. Um, so, all right guys, so I got pretty much everything tore out except for uh, the up pipes in the turbo. I did round a bolt off on the passenger side up pipe, you know, where it bolts to the, the passenger side manifold. So I just undid the clamp, as you can see right there, where it bolts to the turbine housing. So I'm going to leave that up pipe attached to the, the manifold and I'm going to pull that off as one, as one piece. I pulled the down pipe out. I take the inner fender ladder out. Um, down pipes out and then the little elbow that hooks to the back of the turbo is also out. So everything's pretty much laying out here. All the intercooler piping, um, down pipe, and then this little piece is the elbow that hooks to the back of the turbo and then the down pipe hooks there. So. I still have yet to do anything with the fuel pump. Fuel pump is still in the truck um, right down here. So I'm getting ready to break the turbo free now. Uh, it looks like I got to take a coolant line off still and then the four bolts on the pedestal and she'll be coming right out. So let's pull a turbo. Oh, all right guys. Uh, so here's where we are as of right now. Um, we're ready to start putting stuff back on. So I tried to, what, so what I was trying to do here is I was trying to take the least amount of stuff off as possible. Obviously, isn't that the goal, um, in order to, you know, to get the fuel pump out and stuff. So I couldn't really find any like super solid direction. So I called old SPE Dan and he said to, uh, you know, just pull the whole bracket that the fan mainly bolts to. Uh, it's a huge bracket down there. Um, so I didn't end up pulling like the fan clutch off of the whole assembly. I just pulled the bracket off and then laid the entire assembly back in the fan shroud. Didn't even take the shroud off. So I laid everything back in there and it exposed the uh, vacuum pump that you have to pull off in order to get in there and get to the, uh, the bolt that holds the CP4 gear on. So vacuum pumps hanging out right there. Uh, we have that opened up. We have the bolt. We have the nut off, and I just popped the CP4 loose. Um, I took off all of the fuel line mounting brackets, so the fuel lines are kind of just loose and hanging out in there. I did pop off the crossover fuel line that goes over to the passenger side fuel rail. Um, that's sitting right here. I took it off where it mounts and I just folded it back that way. I didn't bend any lines or anything. Um, with all the brackets loose, you kind of have enough play to, to slide them all back in order to get the pump out. Um, so turbo is out. I put the SPE uh, pedestal cover on just so nothing would go down into the engine uh, because that would be a bad deal. So I'm probably going to get the new fuel pump in before I go ahead and start doing the uh, pulling the factory manifold out for the new one. Um, so here is the old fuel pump and fuel pump gear. So there is a tab on the shaft, you know, that kind of, it can only go one way. You have your slot in the gear. Um, so that, that can only go on one way, but you do have to make sure that this is timed properly with the cam gear. You see the two, the two little marks right there. See those two little marks on the, on the, on the pump gear. So there's a single mark on the cam gear that has to go in between those two. So yeah, there we go. The fuel pump was a little tricky to get out. It didn't really want to pop out of its like position that it was in. Um, gently prying and pulling and wiggling and it just popped free just all of a sudden. Um, so, you know, if you guys are pulling your fuel pump and you're like, man, this thing isn't coming out, just keep trying, you know, get your hand underneath because the three posts that the fuel pump actually bolts to, um, there's three studs that go through the three uh, mounting holes. And the studs are, are on the engine itself. So the fuel pump has to come out square. You know, if it's, if it's turned in there just a little bit, the, uh, the, the mounting hole will hit on the stud and you won't be able to slide it out. So it has to come out parallel and even um, or you'll just be in a bind and it won't come out. So 
just keep trying at it and wiggle it and you know try to pull it off as square and as even as possible and i'm not gonna lie i, I was messing with it for a while you know i was starting to be like man this thing ain't coming out but we got it out. Other than that, everything else was smooth sailing. There's nothing really special, you know, I want to note. It's definitely easier to just pull that whole front fan mounting bracket instead of pulling the fan clutch off of that. And then you have to pull that off anyways. So you might as well just weasel your hands in and around and pull the whole bracket with the fan still attached. That way you're not dealing with the whole fan clutch and trying to get that off. But all right, so I am going to get the new CP4 in, try to get that timed and we'll see how that goes. What are you watching? All right, guys. Uh, extremely catastrophic bad news. Well, let's go over this first real quick. All right, uh, fuel pump is in. We have the new CP4 in, properly timed. Doing that was a little tricky. It was a learning process for me. Um, we finally got the engine turned over where I could see the timing mark on the cam gear uh, because it has to line up with the two on the pump gear. Simple process. It's just was getting the, the engine turned over to be able to see the timing mark on the cam gear was the hard thing. Um, got that done. We're, I was literally torquing this. Um, the main nut for the CP4 is on. I didn't torque it yet. It's tight. Um, and then the three mounting bolts for the CP4 I was torquing. Um, I found online, just a quick reference, they go to 18 foot pounds. Okay, so 18 foot pounds. Old Craftsman wrench here, you know, just the old Craftsman uh, torque wrench. It's probably super old. Going real easy, going real slow, feeling it out. Two torque down. Well, I, I snugged them all first, uh, and then it was going around for the final torque. And I got two out of the three torques properly. And the third one I'm on, and I go feel it, feel it, and it, it never gets tight. It's never it's not getting tight. Oh, and the reason why I'm using the uh, old Craftsman unit, because the snap-on unit, I think the battery's exploded in here. So we have this nice torque wrench. Can't even use it. Um, so anyways, on the third one, I'm turning and turning and turning. It's turning, and it's not getting tight. So I said, uh-oh. One last turn. I felt it. I said, oh, buddy. <laughs> that's like that's pretty bad so I was looking real quick online to see if I could find like a parts diagram a parts fish of what it looks like back there okay so that's the hole where the CP4 shaft comes through it, it hits on the uh, cam gear right there um, and these three bolts you got one two and three are the three stud bolts that go through the actual block and go to these parts here to bolt the CP3 in. So I'm hoping, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I can pull the pump back out through the hole that you access the pump gear to, I can, I can get to that bolt. It looks like a bolt head in this picture here. I don't even know what this picture is. I found it on Google. It looks like a bolt. I'm praying that it's a bolt and I'm praying that we can get it out um, without having to take off that front cover. <laughs> Crisis completely diverted. Okay, so here's what we did. I got on the phone with old SPE Dan. He goes, yeah, you're screwed. But it turns out that I uh, I broke the best possible bolt out of the three that hold the fuel pump on. Because, uh, you know, if you were down here, this is behind the crank gear. Crank gear sits, or cam gear sits right here. Um, this one is too far over to the right. This one basically is the only accessible one to get to through the open port. SPE Dan goes, yeah, just take the bolt out, go get a new bolt that matches the thread pitch that goes through the block. And then instead of running the bolt from the inside out, whenever you have your fuel pump in, run a new bolt from the outside in. So this will bolt into the block using the same thread pitch as the bolt that comes through the block. You guys following what I'm saying? Now we got a flush square bolt and we have uh, just about a half an inch of thread going into the block to allow for proper securement of the CP4, which is great because, whoa. All 
All right, guys, so we successfully got the fuel pump in with that rigged bolt. So the, the fuel system side of things is completely done. Um, CP4 is in, all the lines are back, all the mounts are in. Um, so I went ahead and I pulled the uh, passenger side exhaust manifold, but for the exhaust manifold studs, you gotta pull the factory studs out, um, you know, and it, it takes like an E7 uh, on the stud here. Um, so I did the first two, like the, the easiest ones right here with that E7, and I literally snapped the tip off of both of them. That one snapped and then this one snapped. So well, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna go through um, with the, the two nut method here. Easy process, I just took the uh, factory nut that went on the stud and I reversed them, put them together, and then uh, you know just turn the bottom one, loosen it. But you gotta be careful with these. You don't wanna break these off in the cylinder head. This is probably uh, a crucial step here. Um, and with the way that I'm going breaking bolts, uh, I, I, don't want, I don't wanna break these off in there. Alrighty guys, we made some huge progress. We have the exhaust manifold is on. Everything is torqued in that aspect. Um, you can see right there, I took off the heat shield on the driver side exhaust manifold so you can see you know exactly how it looks. Um, this is the factory up pipe that comes off of the back of the driver side manifold and that, that would hook normally to the turbo, um, but it hooks right into the new driver or passenger side exhaust manifold. It's like a tongue twister with all these manifolds. Um, and then the turbo hangs, bam, right on there. I'm gonna do a full service of fluids as in you know new fuel filters and uh, fresh oil change just in case anything went down into the oil. Um, coolant wise, you know, especially when you pull this pedestal off here, there's all kind of mix of oil and coolant ports. And then, you know, especially with the new CP4, we're going to do fresh fuel filters. So still got a little bit of work to go. We are officially on the home stretch. Turbo is about to go in and then it's installing the downpipe and the intercooler piping and we are set. So hopefully we get a start up here in just a minute. All right, guys. So the adapter flange that is included with the kit actually goes on to the elbow piece that, uh, hooks onto the factory turbo because the outlet size of the turbine housing is bigger on you know whatever turbo you're gonna go with, most likely it will be bigger. So they give you this adapter piece and you bolt that to your elbow with your factory exhaust clamp. It bolts together, you know, standard flange style. And then the uh, new exhaust flange clamp goes on the adapter piece to the turbine housing on your new turbo. So right now I'm kind of just figuring the clocking, you know, on the clamps to see where I want to have this one back there and then with the new one. Um, and then also I'm checking the clocking on the housing on the front compressor cover to line up with the hot side pipe that goes to the intercooler before I go and snug the uh, compressor housing cover down. So I got it, I got it loose right now where I can move it. I'm just trying to figure out the best position where these will be as flush and parallel as possible. And then I'm gonna snug that down. But yeah, so I'm getting ready to throw the elbow in right now on the back. We'll probably get that buttoned up and then I'll come up here and finish up here. But yeah, we are super close. I, uh, I'm trying to just keep you guys updated, you know, once I get to, you know, certain steps on the unit here. So yeah, let's go. Okay, so now here, here's a little thing. This is just an install thing for my truck. Um, now, I, I tried every which way to center the back flanges on the rear of the turbine housing. Okay, so, um, so that is your factory elbow, which connects to the uh, turbine housing on your new turbo, correct? Um, the, you are supplied with an adapter to reduce down to the size of the elbow. So the issue I was running into with the downpipe was um, you can see the downpipe there, and you can see where the factory bolt normally bolted into the back of the block. Um, you can see how it is to the right, and it is behind the factory mount. So that puts it, you know, back that way a hair, and towards the driver's side a hair. So upon installing the downpipe, I was running into an issue with getting it to mount to the factory positioning on the rear of the cylinder head. If you see those two studs right here, there's a stud there and a stud there. There was a bracket on the downpipe that mounts there. The SPE direction state to pull those studs and just put a bolt in to hold the downpipe in uh, only one of the mount. So you only use one mounting hole on the mount, but in order for my downpipe to have enough grab on the elbow to tighten the clamp, 
my up pipe is up past my the 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 mounting surface on where it would have to mount on to put a bolt through. So in other words, if I would mount it onto that mounting surface, the downpipe would be too far down this way to grab onto the elbow up there. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. I triple did it. I probably still am doing something wrong. You guys are gonna notice in the video like, dude, you have this backwards with it. I don't know. I redid the, the V-band clamps on the back with the adapter six different times, and I was still getting it to the point where the up pipe has to be farther up to grab onto the elbow in order to tighten the clamp and it's past the mounting surface on the rear of the cylinder head. So what I did was I went ahead and I cut off that mount. I left the two pieces attached to the downpipe in case I would ever want to weld it back on. This is how it went. Okay, so there's your two holes that mount onto those two studs. Um, so I just, I just sliced the weld down each side and pulled this off. So if need be down the road, I can weld that back on, whatever. And then I went over it and buffed it real quick just to get some of like the heavy crud off. It still looks like crud, but it's a lot better than what it looked like previously. So um, this is gonna go back in right now. And, and real quick, if you're wondering why I even cut off the mount, because with the mount still attached to the downpipe, it was sitting up kind of, you know, past the mounting surface on here and it was it was fairly close to that there but i didn't want the downpipe to flex over or something settle and then this bracket end up rattling on the rear of the cylinder head so i just sliced it off so there you go that's why i cut it off all right officially ready to give it a fire up there's the final look of the uh of the downpipe in there there's no way i could have made that bracket work uh, i might still try to maybe weld a new bracket or something um, the exhaust is, is installed, everything's tight. VZT 67 sound. Listen to this. All right, guys, the truck is ready to roll. I am super pumped. I, I, I drug this out way longer than it should have been. I worked on it like a little bit, you know, over the past couple of days, um, just because there's so much stuff going on, I couldn't just put like three straight days, which that would have been a lot better. But anyways, the truck's good, we're ready to roll. Um, all I have left to do is button up the intercooler piping, such as the intake plenum, hot side, cold side, air filter, um, inner fender, like just minimal stuff. Everything like mechanically and uh, oil wise is, is great. Nothing's leaking, everything's still secure. Uh, I'm probably gonna go back over all of like the stuff that got hot um, just, to, just to make sure everything's good to go with that stuff. So this is where I'm gonna leave you guys for this video. I'm sure it's getting you know too long already. Um, so overall the job was, it was, it, it was intense, but it wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it was overall simple, but it just took some time. Um, the only thing I really had to modify was that downpipe. Everything else pretty much went straight in, except for when I myself snapped the uh, CP4 stud bolt thing, whatever it's called. Um, but you know, we, we got around that. I got really lucky with that one because if we would have broke any other one, we would have been in a serious jam. But all right, that's it. I'm starting to ramble now. There you go. SPE Emperor Turbo Kit S370 ball bearing turbo in the Warren 55% over CP4 upgrade. So I'm waiting on the base map from Dan. So tune into the next video. Uh, we're going to do our first, you know, easy drive in the truck. Uh, possibly take it to the dyno. I don't know what the scheduling is for that just yet. But yeah, tune in the next video. See what the heck this thing's all about on the road. But anyways, if you made it this far, you are freaking awesome. If you have any questions, try to post them below. Shoot me an email. Guys, I am like super swamped with emails, orders, DMs. 
Um, I'm trying to sift through them, you know, as much as I can, but there's just so much, you know, you know, you guys just have so much interest in the 6.7 Power Stroke, but, uh, you know, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.